You're listening to the What is a Woman podcast, hosted by the Catholic Family Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the What is a Woman podcast. My name is Holly, and as always, I'm joined here by my mother, Mandy, and we are super excited to be back uh, for another episode. But before we jump into everything, we'll just start off by saying, Jesus, Jesus meek and humble, humble a heart, heart, make our hearts like, like unto thine. thine. So uh, something really special this week. This is our 25th episode, Ooh. providing I haven't lost count <laughs> <laughs> and didn't mess up count somewhere. But I'm pretty sure I label them every time I export them. And this seems to be number 25. So our silver I, anniversary, our silver anniversary. I think that's a big milestone. So uh, we'll party later. Party later. <laughs> <laughs> um so anyways, um, yeah, so we're excited and I'm um, happy to be back. And um, I just, before we jump into everything, I wanted to just share a quick little thing. Um, last Saturday, I was able to make it down for uh, Father Adam Craig's first Psalm High Mass. So uh, that was quite a blessing and quite a... Um, experience. It was my, I, I may have been to a solemn high mass before when I was a kid, uh-huh. not any that I would remember. Yeah, I so know. Yes. I'm going to count this as my first solemn high mass. And it was, I will say I found it hard to actually pray the mass. Yeah. Because I was so like the singing in and awe. The, in awe of everything that was going on in the altar and like the singing. And I have to say it was at Father Radecki's parish in St. Joseph, uh, Wayne, Michigan. Um, and he has a bell. They have a bell yeah. tower. Like not, it's not a tower, but it's a steeple. How wonderful. And a little bell. So when they, when the priests and, and the clergy were coming in, they rang the bell while the choir was singing. Like a steeple it bell. Was, yeah. It was like, yeah. like, and so somebody's up in the choir loft pulling the rope. It was like you were in the sound of music or something. Right. And, um, and then at the consecration again, they rang the bell while they rang the bells at the altar, but they rang the big wow. steeple bell. It was beautiful. It was just beautiful. And, um, my husband even came and uh, my husband who's not catholic came and he went to the mass and uh he thought it was very nice he said it was very nice so it was uh he said you could have shaved off 25 minutes (laughs) (laughs) this is coming from a non-catholic and what he cannot wrap his hand his head around and okay bear in mind this is coming from a person of zero faith no cat he can't get over the up and down yeah. Okay. No, and they can never get they over can the. They never up and down. get over the up and down, the genuflecting, the standing, the sitting, and he's like, "What is with all the kneeling and standing and sitting and back and forth?" And I just kind of like, you know, like he's he's just being silly. He's not. But no, being, they can never get over. But they that. can't get over it. They can't understand why you can't either just kneel or just sit. Or just like, sit why can't or you just stand. sit? But no, he yeah. he even said that he goes, "Why can't you guys just kneel?" He goes, "I'd be fine kneeling. It's the up and down." <laughs> Oh, he thinks he'd be fine. He kneeling. thinks he'd be fine. <laughs> I often he... feel for those on the altar when yeah. I watch them on the uh, on the cold, hard marble. marble floor. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, so it it was it was just beautiful. It was wonderful. We crossed the border, and uh, that was our first time in the states. And mm-hmm. and uh, we won't be saying that. We won't be saying and that, that and... ever again on the Catholic <laughs> Family Podcast. I think we've said it a few times. We've said, yeah. But we we said we're that. not going there. We're not going there. <laughs> but anyway, so it, apparently it's not over. It was refreshing. <laughs> it was refreshing to go into the states and 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 so now I have some you know God willing some big summer plans to visit some people and yeah uh, and uh, I'm really excited about that yeah so uh, it's good to be with your good Catholic peoples peoples right that's right. So also, too, uh, coming up on Sunday, we have Pentecost. We have Pentecost Sunday, yes. Right? So I was, I'm was. i hoping that uh, everybody took advantage of the novena. And oh, say, and I did just want to say, before we get into that, there was one other thing I wanted to say. I do apologize. There were some people, and if you're listening, that wanted to talk with me after the Mass, uh-huh. and I missed a bunch of people. The, there were so many people there, Yeah, and Father Radecki's parish the church hall social hall the basement there it was packed right i was taught trying to talk to sister josepha and i was trying to talk to some other people that i hadn't seen in a while and i couldn't barely get near them right it it was there were so many people and it was just it was like uh 
It would have been nice to see Sister Josepha. I haven't yeah, seen her. I haven't a long seen her since time. Girls Camp. I know she She's came. Wonderful. She was one of our first nuns that came for Girls Camp mm-hmm. here in Canada. Just love her, and she was just such. She made such an impression on me. So it was so good to see her. And uh, you have to know, I have two sisters, and we all kind of like when we were kids, we looked. People often said we were triplets, right? But we weren't. And she walked up to me, and she was like. Holly Heather Arani. Like right away. <laughs> she knew I was one of the Dravid yeah. girls, but she didn't know which one. So she was like, Holly Heather Arani. <laughs> I was like, oh, Sister Giuseppe, I love you. <laughs> She's just, just like that that bright ray of sunshine. You know what? When I think of her, you know what I think of? You know when you see like the old timey postcards or whatever and the nun on the bicycle you yeah. know like that she's that nun you oh, know she <laughs> you know she was that nun well, she she's was fun the, yeah I she's really the fun her. she I was just when, yeah. especially when you were a kid she was that nun that every kid uh-huh. i felt like anyways for our girls camp yeah. every child gravitated towards sister yeah. mary josepha oh uh, yeah so it was good to see her I haven't seen that was like we're probably see going again. on I really, like 20 I really years. like to see her hopefully she'll come to canada someday and yeah with us. yeah so anyway Anyways, moving on. Moving Pentecost on. Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday, <laughs> I'm yeah. I'm still flying She's high flying high. And even I had a good friend of me, a friend of mine, um, she was flying high too. She was there. You didn't get a chance to talk to her yeah. either. But um, she's like, she's like, call me. Call yeah. me so I get yeah. to. And, she, and I called her in the excitement. She was so it's a, there's oh, honestly thrilled just, and she had such a high on life and I think I think many Catholics and maybe you ladies who are listening can weigh in in, in the comments if this is maybe just we it maybe if we just feel this way because we're Canadians and we're so kind of like I don't want to say apart but we kind of are like when you're in America mm-hmm you you hear America of, America you hear <laughs> of all these uh that's my best American accent for you we met the most delightful lady at Hobby Lobby, but man, she had a thick American accent. <laughs> and my husband was laughing when she said, HobbyLobby.com. <laughs> That's my best American accent. I'm not making fun of you guys. I love you. <laughs> um, and to be fair, people say we have Canadian accents and they impersonate us. So anyways, yeah. <laughs> but um, where was I going with that? Oh, yeah. We, we, um, we do feel apart because... Especially with the mm, what happened in the last three years, you know, the states like you're so you can just travel to this state and go to this parish and go to this function. And there's so many um, different parishes that you can travel around and visit within right. the states. But here in Canada, there's not very many. How about and, none? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, no, there's missions like you yeah. know, we have a couple. We have the Whitby mission. We have this. But it's not the same. Yeah. It's not the same as what you ladies have in the right. U.S. So uh, if I could just say from an outsider, maybe I love being Canadian, but I do kind of get a little green eye over the what yeah. the Americans have. Treasure that. Yeah. And be grateful for it because, you know, even like Father Cepeda is having this one yeah. day. Uh, uh, meeting of all the confraternities can come yeah. to Denver. Like, and I can't go to that. It's just too far. Right. You know, so it's very like, we're kind of up in the great white North and, yeah. you know, we don't, we don't get to be party to a lot of these things. Right. So it really is a big deal when you go to these things because we don't have them. Right. You know, the ordinations and this and that. And it is a big trip to go to these things. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, it's like a three-hour drive for me to go down. Yeah. Just almost three hours. Um, But it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going into another country. And you never know. Like, you get to that border and they can turn you around for no reason. Just because they don't like the way you look. Any reason at all. They don't, they don't, well, they don't even have to give you a reason. They don't even have to give you a reason. All they have to say to you is you are inadmissible to this country. Yeah. You know, so, so so anyway, so I just, it just is a, just such a blessing to see the Catholic, I'm going to use the word Catholic culture. Yes. Which I feel, if I'm being honest, we don't get a lot of that here. No, no, we don't. You know, um, I mean, we have our own Catholic culture, but it's not the same. It's not Canadians the same. are a different breed of people. They're, yeah. But I, I just pointing that out and I can't remember who did it. Um, but there was, I saw pictures on Facebook of somebody who had a rosary walk on their farm. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I was like, 
I want to. I want to be there. I'm doing that. If I, I was I'm, I'm the doing that. Whoever, I can't remember who did it, and they were there. And I said, and I thought, we're I think it was in the day. set of a contest group. We're going to pick a feast day. We're going to make pictures, and we're going to have a yeah. rosary rock here. Like Canadians just don't do stuff like I, that. I, but you know what? I think I think after seeing being in the states and and actually even being part of all these Facebook groups and moms groups. Um, the chats and seeing all the way these American moms, I really have to give it to you, ladies. Yeah, you really do put. Uh huh. From what I've seen, yeah, a lot of you really put the Catholic faith at the forefront. Yeah, and you make it the center of everything. You right, know, right. I mean, I'm only getting a little glimmer on Facebook, but from what I see, I look at that and I'm like, man, we have to start doing things like that. Yeah, you know, because Canada's a different breed. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You know, we're not. Uh, we're a very liberal country. <laughs> no, liberal. And I do so think we don't it, see I a lot it of. Does spill over? A li- yeah. You know, like um, you know, you go to America and America. America. <laughs> You're saying it now. <laughs> you go down there. You go down south, and it's you know, I got my Jesus, I got my shotgun, yeah. and it's everywhere. And well, people are especially like the that. south, the bat, like you know, it, you're not you're allowed to say you know I, what what are their sayings? I got my Jesus and my sweet tea in the morning or something. Yeah, you know, they you know, slap it on shirts. They slap it on bags. Yeah, in they, Canada, people Canada, don't, you don't see that. You don't see that. You don't see any. God is very he's, hush hushed. He's He's buried. He's buried very deep here, which is so sad. Yeah. And then, but then when I see it, I'm like, you know what? I feel like it's on us to change that. Yeah. I'm Even the, just like in our own homes. I'm right. not saying we're going to go out on the street and hold signs. No, no. And, but we're going to change it. And we're definitely going to change, change it, it in our own homes. Because after seeing some of the things I'm seeing in America, I'm like, wow, I don't feel like I'm doing enough. Yeah. You know? well, <laughs> even here, we got this big, well, I, uh, I, we, I have two outdoor statues of Mary, but I mean, if if you've seen, I actually did a video on the Catholic homestead where I showed people the property, the, the homestead, the homestead. <laughs> oh, Mom, I believe I even put that in quotations in the editing <laughs> homestead. <laughs> but anyway, but we have a lot of work to do. But one of the things that I must do, and I even now that my son's home, is we have to build a big, great big shrine to like Mary, like a grotto or something. Yeah, yeah. like we're going to build that. Uh, we just got so much stuff to do. But I did say to my son, I said, you know, what was the first thing Noah did? When he when that ark landed, he what built an altar unto God. God. Yeah. First things first, you know. Yeah. So and I, I feel like, you know, maybe we gotta get that up in up our priority. Yeah. Up in our priorities to get it done, even mm-hmm. though there's a million other things to do. Yeah. But But anyways, anyways back to Pentecost. Back to Pentecost Sunday for the second time. <laughs> for the second time. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. We had a lot of great stuff going on, a lot of stuff worth talking about, that's for sure. So I thought, um, as I said, I hope I hope everybody's taking advantage of that very powerful novena to the Holy Ghost that yes. started after Ascension, the day after Ascension Thursday. Yes, yeah. and goes to goes to um, Pentecost, Pentecost course, Sunday, right? A, a novena to the Holy Ghost. And I was thinking about it, and I thought, um, I I think we need to talk about the Holy Ghost. Oh, okay. And um, a friend of mine had. Uh, had mentioned like quite a few um, shows back. She put in the comments, Mandy, share your holy hour. Right. Yes. Right. And I thought, well, I mean, I'm going to give you a little backstory to this holy hour because I I created it when um, when you were gone. You had oh, left. it always comes back. <laughs> <laughs> well, desperate, desperate times calls for desperate measures. <laughs> Right, and your your brother, he was out west because yeah. he's older than you. He had moved away. He wasn't, yeah. you know, he had moved away, and you were gone. And I had just had two, he wasn't gone like I was gone. <laughs> uh, I had just the two two your sisters at yeah. home. That was it, and I was pulling my hair out because um, uh, just a little backstory. Your dad had died. Yeah, he had just died. Yeah, and um, after your dad had died what i'd said to you guys was i said okay it's really important now we got to be saints right. we have to become saints right? right and and um i'm like in this mode of we got to be saints and yeah. you guys are all f- losing your marbles right <laughs> you know and i mean it was a very traumatic thing that happened right, right? so i mean the year is what 2008 yeah it was 2008 and and you were gone you weren't completely gone. I was completely gone. But yeah. by the end of 2008, you, you would be completely gone. gone. Yeah. Right? 
and then there was and then there was your sisters and there was also a few other young adults around the parish and i was like i was pulling my hair out i was like these kids are going to be lost yeah. they're going to be gone you know like this is not going well for me i said we need to be saints and everybody goes off the deep end <laughs> you know i'm like okay <laughs> Where, you didn't get the memo? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I was working overtime on what to do to get these kids, young adults. So, I mean, Ronnie was 18. So your sister was 18. She was right. the youngest. So you're talking 18 and up. 18 and up. So uh, r- hovering around the 20 age mark, yeah. right? I was like going working overtime to think about how do I keep these kids in the church and you know to stop them from losing their souls right you know and um, my game plan was because i was watching you know everything that was around me and everything was no good right i think i had mentioned this before that like i said everything was evil yeah and father james said well mandy your kids you know they they thought i was like cuckoo crazy i see just see eight evil everywhere (laughs) you know and father james said to me he goes well mandy you're girls say you just say everything's evil and i'm like father it, it is, is. <laughs> i'm not making <laughs> this up you think these guys are sitting by the campfire drinking coca-cola singing kumbaya yeah. you know not happening <laughs> no you know? no <laughs> you know and so uh anyway so what i said well i had to i knew i knew and mothers pay attention to this you can't just take you have to replace right Right. Yeah, so you can't take stuff away and then just go, okay. You can't say, okay, no TV, no, no, ga- no games, yeah. no this, no that. It just can't be a world of no. Yeah. You have to replace. Yeah. It, you have to offer an alternative, right? Right. And so for me, that was really difficult, like, to offer an, alter- an alternative. Right. Like, what do you offer, right? right. <laughs> so I was like, okay, all right, uh, well, I'll make a club. I'll I'll give them a club. That's right. Yeah. So we'll give them a club and I'm going to call it the guardians of truth. (laughs) That, and, and so, and there was, there was about maybe six or seven kids at the time, you know, um, all around 20 years old. And I said, okay, guys, we're the guardians of truth, you know? And I said, we're going to go have holy hours. I'm so sad I missed this. Well, you know what? I was thinking, (laughs) because I was going over it and I was thinking, I need to resurrect this. Yeah, because I will say, like, when you started this, I had, I'm going to say, a heel left in the door. Yes. Like, when I, like, you know, so you started this and I was just hanging in the doorway yeah, with Yeah, well, heel. you didn't live at home either. No, I know. So that that's my and point. your sisters like, did. You know, so, and I, w- I still had, the, the bright side of this was I still had enough, um, they still had enough in the door that they wouldn't balk me. me. Yeah. They wouldn't say, we're not doing not. that. We got other things to we do. We got other yeah. things to do, you know. So I said, we're going to have this holy hour. And I bribed them too, I said. Oh, mom. Yeah, I was bribing. You know, you I said. Them? No, <laughs> chicken kidding. wings. I said, well, Oh, yeah, two, 25 cent chicken wings. I said, well, Joe's. Yeah, I said, we'll go to a holy hour and then we'll go for chicken, chicken wings, wings. And I'll buy. We'll have chicken wings, you know. So <laughs> The holy hour was not on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> it was Tuesdays. It was Tuesdays. That was when the cheap wings were. So. Yeah. Anyway, so so I got this whole holy hour together, yeah. and I planned it all out, and I I was like, um, and and what I had found was it actually had a huge effect. Well, you know, I'm just gonna say like that's pretty genius, because like when you think about it, young adults, yeah, um, you know, like yes, you want them to pray, and you want, but like you know, you you took something away, yeah. You took away the going out and partying and whatever yeah. that they would have normally been doing. And you replaced it with supervised fun. Yes. Like the holy hour was the main focus. Yes, obviously. Yes. But you also added in a caveat. Yes. That gave them some socialization afterwards. Yes. And something fun to do. Right, right. That's yes. pretty genius. Well, I mean, I'm desperate. Desperate times cause for desperate no. I magic. know, I know, but you like, know? and I like, I feel like I just want to spell this out, and I don't mean this to be like, I don't want to, you know, yeah. shock anybody. You have to understand the children that my mom was dealing with were not the kids 
that were like for fun let's go you know hang out with a bunch of catholics and go bowling after mass yeah like the these were not the kids the, we were very worldly yes and we had like i had left my sisters didn't leave but we were all very worldly our yes. main concern was that of the world yes like yeah. so to say and i mean i would say i would go so far that you know like your while well, your brother was gone you were gone and your sisters very worldly but what kept them in the church and even uh, your other sister she would tell you was mostly fear fear yeah right you weren't yeah. there for love of god you were there yeah. for fear of god so that, that so this is not meant to sound like oh you know we were just my mom just needed something just to increase our prayer life like no she needed to pull out mm-hmm. stuff some serious stops. Yeah. Because things or were not going well. kids were going to lose their souls. Things were not going well. So, yeah. so anyway, so I, I was, I, I opened up the prayer books and I had thought in my head, I thought, okay, what do I need these kids to know? Right. Mm-hmm. And this is, and I looked for the prayers that would drive home the points I wanted driven home. Right. So as I was looking through, and I, I thought we'd go through this holy hour just so you can see what, because it was actually, it turned out to be, like absolutely incredible it was like first of all it became a total holy hour to the holy ghost right right because um and how you know and i I feel that this is the age of the holy ghost right this because we have no pope we have no direction we have no authority right you know we need the holy ghost right you know we're running on a prayer in the holy ghost right (laughs) you know like so so this is the way it started. And here, maybe you can just, you can read. You have a nice reader voice. So, well, we're not so the very the first thing, right? line, the very, no, we're not going to read the whole thing. The very first line of the prayer, the very first line of the holy hour is what? Well, we've read this before. We've read it before. We'll read it, we'll read it again. St. Cyril of Jerusalem tells us we must fight. Quote, for I say that martyrs of the end times will excel all martyrs. For the martyrs hitherto have wrestled with men only. But during that time, they should do battle with Satan in his own person. Yeah. Unquote. So That's here, the very first. yeah. So here I was. I wanted to, I wanted to tell these, you know, incite in these kids that, okay, you're in a battle here. You're in, a, you're in a. This is a war. Like you're going to have to fight Satan. Yeah. And you're not going to pe- be prepared to do that in your current state. In your current <laughs> state, right? So the next, so just we're not going to so, read yeah, all the prayers, no, but, but so then she goes on. It goes on to place yourself in the presence of God. So pr- there's a prayer. okay. So what? Well, placing your placing yourself in the presence of God. To me, this was this was the most important thing. Like I felt like none of this could possibly be successful unless we were in the presence of God. Right. Right. So we, I had to get them to go to the church. And read these words in front of the Blessed yes, Sacrament. Yeah. I mean, and after we did this, I saw how su- successful it was. I just kept making holy hours yeah. and writing things that I wanted them to know and making them go to the church and right. s- and s- reading it in front of the Blessed Sacrament. And then we have the Virgin Most Powerful Prayer, which, which we put on the website. Which and maybe we, we'll put the whole holy hour well, on the I started. I started typing it last oh, night. Okay. So hopefully by the time this airs, I'll have finished it. And the whole holy hour will be on, on the website so we've read that virgin most powerful maybe you can just pick a couple lines because it's really it really and this is the thing with kids especially young men you need to you know um build up that we need to prepare we need to fight we need we're we're at war with principalities and powers right you we read it once before um so i'm trying to remember which part um Oh, well, this one, Mary will drive back the forces of hell that surround me. She will obtain light for my intellect and strength for my will that I may not fall into sin and lose my soul. So it's very, um, yeah, it's about the power, about, the it's, power it's about the fight Mary. and the fighting the devil, that whole prayer. Yeah. So here, just turn the page. All so right. what's next? And then, oh, then we got a prayer to St. Dymphana. Okay. So, all right, this is, this was important, right? So I picked all these things in, in the thing i thought okay we need a patron saint we're a group the guardians of truth we need a patron saint and i picked saint Saint dymphana Dymphana. because saint dymphana is the saint for mental anxieties and and illnesses and this is you gotta remember like i was rereading this last night and in 2008 like in mental the, illness was not like it is today. It was not. I, I had no idea what was coming. coming. 
Yeah. I had no idea we were going to get to where we are here in 2008. Yeah. But I knew that the devil was going to attack through, through the, the mind. mind. Yeah. And that we had to we get... To gar guard that. We had to guard our mind. So, so and, and who else you know, plays a part in the mind, the Holy Ghost, right? right? So I knew, so actually, I believe I wrote this because wrote I was thinking, I, well, I can, because it has my, I thought, I think you wrote this because I, I knew there was about three different prayers in here I actually wrote, but go ahead and read this one. Saint Dimphana, patron saint of the mind, through your intercession, we call on Almighty God, whose power will always reign supreme and just, and as promised, will triumph victorious over the evil deceits of the antichrist that's what tells me i wrote this oh, okay. the word antichrist <laughs> we beg of you saint dimphana to take charge over our minds to guide us and help us ward off the evil predator that seeks to destroy us through insanity as we pledge ourselves to be faithful to the church of christ to be guardians of the truth to be keepers of the faith during this perilous reign of the antichrist so that we may be found standing boldly when Christ returns to say, Yea, thee, Lord, look upon thy faithful servant who has guarded the sacred truths from the assaults of thine enemy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, I'm just going to say, you know, it's funny there. It's like, you know, when you're watching a movie and they're like, Oh, they said the name of the movie in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, I know you wrote that because it says Guardians of Truth right. in the prayer. <laughs> right. I wanted, to, I wanted to get these kids to understand this was an important job. Yeah. Right. If they fail, who is going Could to take their, their place? place. Right, right? right. You know, so and then after the so it's same. So after that is the pledge allegiance to the cross of Christ. And I well, which the very first line is is an actual prayer. Mm -hmm. But then after that, I write again. So yeah. re read that part again. This part here. Yeah. To defend and guard the one true faith give, given to us in the perfect form as God has dictated from the assaults of the Antichrist. To pull it free from all the isms, the snares of the Antichrist has laid to trip trip us up modernism humanism liberalism liberalism naturalism to learn okay can you can you just stop right there because yeah. i just want to make a point about isms all the isms <laughs> if there's an ism after a word it's a heresy oh okay so when even if you say catholicism or not no sorry catholicism is the only ism okay that is the truth say, maybe catholicism say. is the ism that is, is the, the truth. truth. Anything else? Anything else. So conservatism, liberalism, uh, feminism, they all contain heresies, right? Naturalism. Can you think of any? Uh, I mean, the one that starts with T, I'm not going to say it because. Yes. Yeah. You know, we don't, we don't want to get. Another strike. Yeah. We don't want to get another strike. So. But all these isms. So whenever you're reading ladies in a book and you come across an ism, there's yeah. only one true ism. Yes. Catholicism. Catholicism. All other isms are, you might as well just say they're heresies. Right. Okay. So, uh, do you want me to continue reading yeah. this prayer? Okay. Um, to learn how to recognize these traps lest we be caught. Using the gifts of the Holy Ghost, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, fortitude, counsel, piety, and fear. To know our God so well that we can easily recognize the deceit. To weed out and pull from these teachings any attempt the Antichrist has made to corrupt them in our lives. To make conscious effort to find out where the Antichrist has tainted these teachings in our lives and remove it. To accept and honor the duty given to us to be part of only a few who will be called guardians of the faith. In these times of peril, I acknowledge and accept the fact that all things fall into one of two categories. It is either the will of God or the deceit of the Antichrist. With this knowledge, I will arm myself to remove all that is deceit. Right. So, I mean, I'm, and I've gone on about this during our podcast right mm -hmm. that these deceits are so ingrained and embedded in us from you know from 60 years yeah and it's actually more than 60 years because it started you know it's probably started after pope leo's vision you know of trying to you know like the end justifies the means or you know all these little things that we take as truth because right. society it's just like you know, and I, when they, and when you're, when you guys, what had happened after your dad died was like, I, I was like, to God, I was like, how did this happen? How right. is this happening right now? And he kind of showed me, he said, right. well, this is an error. That's an error. That's an error. Yeah. And you're embracing them all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then after that, you sang a hymn to. Um, well, actually, oh. we never actually sang the hymns. Oh. So. I'm not, I know. But, 
<laughs> That's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> you can put hymns in if you like. <laughs> well, it says him, O Sanctissima. Yeah, I well, I sing. Well, we didn't have anybody leading us, and I'm oh. not a singer, so okay. they just it was like, okay, we're not singing. Oh, okay. Well, you well, should sing. We should sing. <laughs> <laughs> um, then Saint Teresa, very powerful, pray for us. Um, and then it goes into where the leader, I guess, takes over a crusader soul. Oh, we just talk about Saint, Saint Teresa. Teresa, and we've read that on. I've pulled some of this stuff out yeah. of there. I mean, we'll put it out. I don't want to read the whole thing. No, well, prayer. well, I'm just reading the stuff that right, I wrote. Right. Like, I'm because the other stuff is just basic prayers. Okay, and then the litany to Saint Dymphana. Okay, yeah, which is good. Paying attention that will to be Saint... in there. Yeah. Um. Okay, and then there's more leader parts, and then all respond. Yeah. Litany of the Holy Guardian Angel. Okay, so all right, so this part here, this is what I. This is what I, these were the things that I wanted to kind of drive home to these guys. All right. So there's a whole big bit in here about our guardian angel. There's a bunch of prayers now because I mean, you're going, you're going into battle against Satan, right? Your guardian angel. You need your, your garden, your guardian angel, right? Yeah. You're not going alone. So, um, so there's, there's a, a letter from, or a lesson from Exodus in there about the guardian angel. And I just wanted to. Oh, yeah. Lesson from the book of Exodus. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will send my angel who shall go before thee and keep thee in thy journey and bring thee unto the place that I have prepared. Take notice of him and hear his voice and do not think him one to be condemned, for he will not forgive when thou hast sinned and my name is in him. But if thou will hear his voice and do all that I speak, I will be an enemy of thine enemies and will afflict them that afflict thee. And my angel shall go before thee. Right. Yeah. So isn't that, that's not a little powerful, right? Yeah. Because I want to point this out. People don't under, really understand the, de so of course, like, so the prayer, the book, the prayers are dedicated towards fighting the devil, right? Mm -hmm. Rising up, fighting the devil. So, um, the, your guardian, the devil cannot get, your guardian angel is more powerful than the devil he mm -hmm. cannot get at you he has to go through your guardian angel. guardian angel to get at you so if he's got at you that means your guardian angel has stepped aside right and that tells you why so yeah. read that again that's why well, i will be no not the whole part he says if do not think him one to be condemned for he will not forgive when thou hast sinned and my name is in him but if thou will hear his voice and do all that I speak, I will be an enemy of thine enemies. And right. And afflict them that afflict thee. Yes. And my angel shall go before thee. So the thing with your angel is you have to listen to him. Yeah. You have to get rid of vice. You have to get rid of sin. Yeah. You have to do, you have, your, your guardian and, angel is there. And to know that if your guardian angel does step aside, it's for your good. It's for your benefit, right? It's for he doesn't, your benefit. He doesn't do anything he, or allow anything to happen to you that is not for your benefit. So you have to have that confidence yeah. that comes with knowing, you know, the bad that comes to you comes yeah. through your angel because it's necessary. Yeah. Okay, so then there's a prayer, and then there's meditation on the words of a true pope, Leo the Thirteenth, um, which has a whole lot of in there about against the true about the truth. truth. Maybe just read it. Pick a couple lines and read them. Uh, each one is under obligation to show forth his faith, either to instruct and encourage others of the faithful, or to repel the attacks of unbelievers, to recoil recoil before an enemy, or to keep silence. When from all sides such clamors are raised against truth, is the part of man either devoid of character who entertains doubt as to the truth of what he professes to believe. Those are parts you had highlighted. So. Yeah. Yeah, because it's all about... So the whole holy hour is, is about the truth. Yeah. And getting to the truth and not being deceived. Because, uh, I mean, for myself, I was... Well, when I saw how much we were deceived. Like, I yeah. was like, we would been so deceived. Yeah. It's not even funny. So. Then there's prayer about providence, which yes. my mom loves. Providence doth provide. Providence doth provide, people. <laughs> Remember, providence oh, doth provide. Oh, and then provide. there's our favorite, the litany of humility. That's a good one. Yeah, you can't do anything if you're not, not humble. humble. Um, And then, uh, what is this here highlighted? The truth of who I am. Well, read it. I don't know. The truth of who I am. All that is good in me is solely the work of God. The only thing I can lay claim to is all that is bad that belongs solely to me. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, these are the truths you have to remember, yeah. right? I mean, how, that keeps you humble, right? Yeah. If anything is good here, it's God's doing. You know, all the mistakes belong to us. And then there's... So we can lay credit for that. Yeah. There's <laughs> the good prayer for final perseverance. That's a good one. Uh-huh. You'll need that. Um, and then we're going... It goes on for um, to pray... Uh, Mary, model of personal sanctity. Yes, that in that in that prayer, and you know what we have these these prayers come from a book called One Minute Meditations on Mary. Yeah. Yes, and we're we're actually going to get Ava to read yeah. them and maybe put them on because yeah. they're only one minute. They're very very short. Sure. And if you read down there, if if I don't, what God wants of me, I I don't have it memorized. What if what God wants of me is that I become a saint? Yeah. How can I lead others if I do not become a saint? And if I do not, be, uh, what good is it to me that others are saved and I am lost? Right. Good. Right. So the the very first and most important thing that you have to do is become a saint. And these are all the, these are the points I want to drive home. Right. So. Okay. So, and then there's another hymn in there that you guys probably didn't sing. <laughs> <laughs> Come Holy Ghost. One of my yeah. favorites. Yeah. Um, okay. And then um, we go into the Holy Ghost. So act so, of consecration to the Holy Ghost. The prayer for the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost. And then this looks like it's the litany. Yes, the litany right? of the Holy Ghost is in there. Now this, incredibly enough, when done in the ho the actual holy hour, because this is a nine-day novena right. that I put into a holy hour. And you guys said the whole thing? You said the whole things with the And at, at, at the end of each little, um, you know, like you're meditating on, you know, the gift of piety, say. And you do the um, one Our Father, one Hail Mary, and then seven glory bees to the Father. Right. And what, when we were doing this um, novena and we would do the seven glory bees, I was, it was to me, it was says those glory bees were like giant hammers to Just me, pounding boom. the truth home. That's like every glory yeah. bee, like we, you're the nail and that glory bee is like the pounding the truth into your That's head. Good. Uh, can I just ask, was this a holy hour or a holy two hours? <laughs> I think it was. I, well, we got so, at the beginning, it took a little longer, but we got, you so, got so good yeah. at it that we got kind of fast at oh, it, I okay. think. And not that I, like. No, it's pretty long. Fine. I mean, I'm that's probably saying, why we didn't sing too. Like or we'd been all the... the whole, or saying, if you, if you prayed the whole novena, that's a long novena. Okay. okay. All right. So I'm just going to skip through this novena here. Yeah. Um, the sanity of sanctity. Yes, another of my favorites, another right? My mom's it's favorite. all about becoming a saint. Saints so what does it matter in light of eternity? eternity? Yeah. Right? So you got to look at all things like, what does this matter right. in light of eternity? Right. What does it matter what color the toilet is? <laughs> Just a fight <laughs> I had. It, what does it matter what a show's called? <laughs> <laughs> you ladies remember from last week. <laughs> We're not going down that road again. Okay. <laughs> and then Virgin Most Prudent. Um, a nice prayer to Mary there. That's a that's another prayer. And, and then we're And then actually in prudence, just the very beginning of the line, prudence, prudence is a virtue of the, the truly, truly successful. successful. Yeah. Right. And then of course a love the lovely prayer from um, Pope Leo the thirteenth to Saint Michael. The lo and that's how we end. Right. Okay, and it's the long is. form. And if yeah. you've never heard the long version of the prayer to St. Michael, it's all about fighting the devil. Like and it's you're ending him, Michael, Prince of all the angels, which you probably didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we may have missed that. That's a real, I think the guardians of truth need to be. Well, I'm going to tell you a couple of things about the guardians of truth. One for young men. Oh, it lights a fire. fire. Yeah. yeah. No, because um, your cousin was part of our group and. He was another one that, you know, he wasn't, he had, like everybody, it's like, yeah, I go to church. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, but when we did that, it really lit a fire under him. Yeah. Like when we was, and he, he was the one that said to me, he said, those glory bees are just like, oh, glory be to the father. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it lit a, it really lit a fire on him that another, uh, another one of our listeners out there, I don't know who, who she is. Uh, her husband was part of the group. Yeah. So he, uh, it really, um, it really drove home to that, to those guys. Yeah. Yeah. Things, you know, and so, and, uh, and just so we're clear, uh, just so I let you know, when I put together the holy hour, our priest at the time was Father McKee mm -hmm. and Father, and I gave it to Father McKee first. Yeah. And I said, please look over this. 
Oh, so he looked over. So he it was it was all looked over by mm-hmm. a priest, and he gave it back to me and corrected all my errors, my spelling <laughs> errors, <laughs> my grammar errors. He said, "Yeah, that's nice, Mandy." <laughs> Two spelling mistakes. <laughs> but anyway, so so that's um we're gonna put it up on the holy uh, we're gonna put it up on the the website the website I'll put a link and then just so that you can have it. But um you know I just wanna you have to get creative, right? Yeah. Like if you're losing your kids, or even if you're not losing your kids, if your kids are still young, you have to instill this in them. Yeah. And I mean, I'm going to tell you, it benefited me. Yeah. You know. Yeah. The two left behind, they they <laughs> they perked up. Yeah. They perked up because of that, and and the kids there too. And um, you nor your brother have ever said it. I've never said it. So I was thinking Maybe that we need uh, to bring it back with the new next generation. I we yeah, do you we got a fourteen year old daughter. Fourteen year old. Yeah. So I was thinking it we're, needs we're to be a we guardian should, of truth. Needs to be a guardian of truth. And um, I was thinking that we'll ask Father. We're going to just you know just private. Like yeah. I mean, obviously there's prayers in there that because I wrote I wrote yeah. a couple of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know that aren't a church approved, and even though I'm. I mean, but you can, if you're saying something privately, you can. Yes, Pri- private use. Yeah. It's, right. It's not, yeah. But so yeah, anyway. that's nice. So yeah. um, so take this, this is my dedication to the, the Holy Ghost. The only thing I'm going to say, just as a side note though. What? 25 cent chicken wing night is no more. Oh, what are we going to do after the Holy <laughs> Well, we'll think of something. <laughs> <laughs> but no that's yeah i remember 25 i didn't go to the guardian's truth but i remember the 25 cent chicken wing night yeah <laughs> they might have something they might have something i'm just being silly anyways um yeah so i mean we've got about 20 minutes left do we want to dive into our book this we week? do we do okay let me just find the book here i have yeah. numbered it i've tried to make notes because we left we left off on chapter 10 um we are on pie the chapter of piety right so we'll we're just at, go ahead and, and i think uh, hopefully in 20 minutes we can finish this up oh okay okay Speed so um right i i just i didn't because it will be too long if you read what's written above there yeah but it's it's going into i believe um no i've forgotten i just did this and i've forgotten already i do have a a short it's it's going the book is talking about serving god versus husband right right so there's a whole bit about that before, but I want you just to start where I... Where you marked there. Okay. Yeah. On the contrary, a quote, on the contrary, in whatever circumstances we may be placed, it is an obligation for us to act for the glory of God and to have no other final end than that of pleasing him. End quote. Right. Okay. So, so they're talking about serving God versus serving a husband. And I didn't... Okay. And, um... The thing about um, when we're serving God, we serve God by serving our husband. Like that's how we do it. But if we're always obedient, we're always, I mean, minus sin. Okay. I mean, but I think it goes back to that. If if you're putting the will of God first and you're letting God guide you, then you're. Yeah. Then you'll be doing his will and in turn you'll be serving your husband. Right. But if you're doing it backwards and you're putting your husband first, you're not going to be thinking about what God wants. Right. Right. Obedience is always the key to these things, to success is obedience. Right. And I know that does sound when I just said that, I, that sounds very like do the will of God and everything will be fine. I didn't mean that to come up like that, like so flippant, you know. Well, like, I, 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 what, I understand okay. that it's not that easy to be like in every, I'm doing the will of God. Like, I get that life doesn't work like that. It should. It should, but, but it's not, it's not, I'll sometimes tell you. it's not easy. No, I know because it's going against what you want. It's going against right. your selfish will. So, and I mean, a husband is like that, right? You're two selfish beings that united together. Yeah. And decide to get married. Right. You know, and now he's head over you. And in order for you to serve God, you have to legitimately S- yeah. serve him and be obedient to him. Right. And um, and who wants to do what somebody else tells them? Said no right. person ever. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I know. Yeah, sure. Sure. I'm going to get right at that. You yeah. know. But anyway, here, continue on. on. Okay, so quote. But there is this difference between the situation of a married and that of a single woman. 
that for the latter the means and the end are in some measure identical, while for the former the means are totally distinct from the end, and can be referred to it only by an act of the will. The virgin has but one duty and one thought, which is to please God. While she that is married has many, thinking of the things of the world, how she may please the husband. All are obliged to have the same end in their actions, but these actions or duties vary according to the different states of life. End quote. Okay, so what they're saying, a single woman, she serves God. So the means and the ends of how she does that is exactly the same. She's right. serving God, right? Whereas the wife, she has to, the, her means and her end is not the same. Her means to her end is not the same, right? Right. Like the single woman just goes directly to God, right. whereas the married woman has to go through to God through her husband. Right. Her means of serving God is by serving her right. husband. Right. Right. Okay, so back to the book. Quote, Woman should bear in mind that devotion consists in the consecration of to God of all our faculties and of every moment of our life, and that piety is a sentiment which grace produces in our soul, which governs the affections of our heart, and leads us to conform our will in all things to that of God as the ultimate end of our being. End quote. Right, okay. So with God, God's grace, um, with God's grace, piety is produced right, right in our soul right so we of course we couldn't breathe without god's grace right we need god's grace so for everything so the more god's grace we have the more piety that is produced within us and you know of course the more the more prayers and sacrifices and stuff the more we allow god's grace to flow i i like to think about uh, here's an analogy for you regarding god's grace like if you have a um an an engine of a car yeah I like to, you know, what stops the car from running? No gas. Oil. Oh. The engine will blow up, right? Oh. If you don't have any oil. I don't know a thing about cars. <laughs> or gas, right? But <laughs> the engine, the engine, well, you can say gas or oil, but the the engine will blow up without oil. Right. Right? So that's kind of like God's, God's grace is the oil right. that makes the engine, engine work. Run. Yeah. Right? So we need to produce the the grace the oil right and how we do that is by the practicing of virtue um the practice so i mean so nothing is ever lost when whatever you do anything so when you're obedient even when you don't want to because that's a virtue yeah you are what you're doing is you're allowing god's grace to flow right so and if your engine is not running correctly get an oil change yeah <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but you need get different some, oil. <laughs> put some more God's grace. You need in God's it. grace oil, not the other oil you're yeah, putting in. Not the other oil you're putting in there. It's corrosive. <laughs> oh, I was waiting the whole time you were talking to bust that one. <laughs> right. Anyways, okay. <laughs> in this sanctification of the will and its acts consists consists the essence of prayer. Prayer, as it is commonly understood, is but a particular form of that general and habitual prayer which the Son of God prescribes when he says, quote, that we ought always to pray and not to faint, end quote. Prayer is an elevation of our mind and heart to God. It is acting for his glory and renouncing his sake and for the performance of the duties he has imposed, whatever may be an obstacle in our way, even spiritual gratifications themselves, end quote. Okay, so... Um... So my big thing there was to pray and not faint. Pray and not faint, yeah. Right, you know, like, you know how, um, and when I think of the word faint, I think maybe anxieties, depressions. I can't well, do faint, it. Fainting Go to my is, bed. I guess you know. fainting is a sign of weakness. Yes. Right, like, so I feel like it's a sign, like, it's like to pray and not faint, to not be weak, to not. Yeah, to like to stand firm. To stand firm, yes, that's the word. Right, you know, for. and, and it, what it continues on to tell us that when it says to pray and not faint, it doesn't exactly, what was the last line? Can you read the last line there? Um, it is rather seeking ourselves and indulging, oh no, sorry, that's the wrong, sorry. Whatever may be an obstacle in our way, even spiritual gratifications themselves. Right, spiritual gratifications that can be an obstacle cool. in our way. And that, what it's saying is that we're like, and I, I remember this person saying to me years ago, you people are robbing me of my peace. 
<laughs> you know, like I can't get any praying done. I can't get any spiritual gratification done. Yeah. I can't get anything that I want because right. you people are well, people are annoying, all... obnoxious, whatever. But, but in my you, way, <laughs> you you would you would allow you allowed that right. right? But those people are important because the performance of the duty, right, towards those people. It's not always about your personal prayer of gratification, right. Like you have to do the performance of your duty. Like right. if, the, if the, you know, if these people are driving you crazy and what she's talking about is her family. Right. You know, if, if those people are driving you crazy, then you have to up the performance of duty towards them. Right. To bring some peace into your home. Yeah. And to like, like I, I think, I mean, and I know mothers with, and it's not so much when you have little children, little children don't provide a lot of, mental anguish to your right, life right adult children. grown teenage children provide Dude. a lot of mental anguish because they're saying stupid things they're doing stupid things <laughs> you know they're you know they're all this stuff and you're just like i just you know they're causing chaos and they're they're doing all this kind yeah. of stuff right you have to with your performance of duty you have to bring the peace into the house yeah right you don't get to, I mean, and we, I know we say a lot of times prayer and sacrifice, right? right? I mean, prayer is important. You have to pray. You have to do your morning prayers. You have to do your night prayers. But, you know, a lot of people just want to be like, I, I just, you know, you can't take away that the performance of the duty is the prayer. Well, it's, a, it's the same, like, I'll put it into a simpler explanation from what I can think of what you're saying. In my mind, you know how people get like with young children in church. Yeah. Right? And the mother is like, I can't pray during mass. Well, your duty, like God understands that right now your ch you have a baby that's crying. Yeah. That's your duty right now. That's your duty right now. It's so if that baby cries during mass, you are allowed to get up and go sit with that baby in the vestibule or the crying or and whatever. You, and, and God if, understands and that. And if you if you have to take them to the car. You have to take them to, to take them to the car. Say, that's okay, your duty right now. Like You're you too can't, much. You can't be like, it's mass time. I'm praying. You can't yeah. say that to a baby. Yeah. You, yeah, know? you know. Right. So this, there's so that's so, where your duty. There's so many instances where your duty does yes. overtake Take. your ability to, to pray. pray. I mean, and yeah. even that um, when the Pharisees tried to trip Jesus up and said, there's an an ox in the hole, right? Yeah. Right. And what does Jesus say? Say. Like, he's just like, what do you do? Take him out? Like, it's like, well, well, well yeah, of course you take If one of yours out. would not fall into the pit on the Sabbath day, would you not go and I can't remember the exact Yeah, but words, it was the but... same thing. They were trying to hip him, trip yeah. him up, right? They were always, that's what the Pharisees were doing. They were always yeah. trying to, you know, trip one him up. One up him. One up him. <laughs> Right, but he said no. You to go get your you go get your go ox. get him out of the hole. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you have to do your duty. Yeah. Okay, so back to our book here. Quote: But to be at our devotions when we should be actively employed, to be at church when duty requires our presence at house, is not praying to God or doing His will. It is rather seeking ourselves and indulging our own inclinations. End quote. So that pretty much basically just yeah. Said well, what we Father said. Father Zepeda had. Um, uh, I don't know. Did you listen to it on duty? No, uh, no, I haven't listened to it yet, but I saw it. Yeah. Well, he says he gave a whole bunch of explanation of, you know, you must do your duty. Like, you know, like a man who, you know, is not looking after his family, but he wants to write, you know, all the, you know, thesis. So and stuff. The, yeah. You know, on prayer and yeah. when you're praying, when you're supposed to be doing that. He gave all kinds of, of examples. examples yeah. of, you know, how a mother would, you know, like you're at the church praying and your house is in chaos. That right. was one of his, that was one of his uh, right. examples. And I mean, I know myself, um, there was a time period where I was like all by myself. So I had all the time in the world to go to the church and pray. And I did all right. the time. Right. And now circumstances changed once again in my life. Yeah. And I have no t I don't have time to go to daily mass and I don't mm -hmm. I I have all these people mm -hmm. that I have to look after and yeah. they don't allow me the freedom to just be praying yeah. now. Right. So now I have to take my pr I have my prayer has to be through my duty. Right. Right. And I feel like, you know, when you're doing your duty and you take, if you take two seconds and offer that up to God. Yeah, that's what you're supposed like, to do. Like I I'm doing this for you, Lord. Here I am doing my duty. Please Bless me, guide me. Yeah. You know, that's your prayer. And and two, a lot of times, 
Um, I mean, with younger children, I think as you age, you just get used to the constant work. Yeah. Right. When you when you have brand new babies, it's overwhelming that how much work you have to do. Like, well, you've gone from being single mm -hmm. to all of a sudden this baby that is, you know, crying and pulling at you and demanding tell, your attention tells you. I mean, the first baby is always a really kick in the head. Yeah. Like it's a real kick in the head because you don't you don't you know. You didn't know what it was like to have somebody at you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Oh, I'm just going to sit down. No, you're not. not. Well, and I'll just tell you, I, I, when my daughter was born, we brought her home from the hospital. And the first night we were at home, mm -hmm. she screamed the whole night. Yeah. The whole night. Yeah. Screaming. like, And we didn't know what was wrong. And uh, I think we just overfed her way too much formula or something. I don't know. But anyways, I remember in that moment thinking... Oh my gosh, my life is over. Yeah. Like, am I ever going to sleep again? Well, you don't. No, I know. Like, I was just <laughs> like, my life is over. My life is over. This baby is, like, my life is over. You from, <laughs> yeah. And then you, I mean, we went from sleeping when you want to sleep, sleeping in if you want to sleep in, getting up when you want to get up, you know? Eating when you want to eat. Eating when you want to eat. Going out when you want to go and out. And in an yeah. instant. An instant, like it was like one it's, day this was my life, and then the next day it was like I have no freedom whatsoever. You know, <laughs> and I mean, and this is, it's this is not to bash new moms because mm -hmm. it is a real. I had the re. I remember I had the reality yeah. check. And I just like, oh, wow, yeah, you know, yeah. like, and you get oh, so this is so much work, and then by the time you have your second baby, you, you're like, uh, whatever. You didn't. You don't <laughs> know why you found that first so, one. Well, because so it's much work. so foreign to you. But you found it so much work because you never had it before. You never had It's a new work that you, a work and that you can't even, uh, uh, I will say this, a work and a duty and a, and a, a responsibility that you could never fully explain to someone could never understand. No one can understand it. Done it. Unless they no one can understand they can't, it. They can't understand Unless it. you've done it. And so, and then by the time you have the second one, now you're running after a toddler. So now you've had maybe one, two years yeah. of of this life of it's no longer your own. No, so you're used to it. You're, you're used to it. And you realize that the baby is just kind of a blob that doesn't, yeah. unless it's colicky or something. Yeah. But generally they're just very uneventful mm -hmm. until they start to move. Yeah. You know, and, um, and so, and then as you get older, it never goes away because, you know, then... I w when they're of an age where they're starting to be independent, then you have then to stay. Then that's grabbing your attention. Then you have to stay up all night <laughs> right. fretting about them being independent. Yeah. You know, like it just, it, it kind of never ends. It does. Yeah, yeah. It actually does end. Eventually they all move out and do something else. But <laughs> and you don't. They all move out and then you don't care. Is that what you're saying? You don't no. care? <laughs> no, you never, you always start. You just, always care. You no, It never I goes know. away. It never goes away. Okay, uh, so we'll just read one more little bit from our book here before we wrap up. So, quote, when the Holy Ghost wishes to place before women who are engaged in matrimonial life a pattern of female excellence, he does not exhibit a wife absorbed in prayer and contemplation, but a woman active and vigilant, employing herself in manual labor, providing bread for her family, rising before daybreak to give victuals to her maidens with the fruit of her hands. Victuals. Victuals. The fruit of her hands, planting a vineyard, strengthening her arms for work, occupying herself with the spindle, relieving the wants of the poor, protecting her servants against the cold of winter by supplying them with double garments, looking well to the paths of her house, and not eating her bread in idleness. Such is the woman who will be loaded with blessings by her children and will receive all honors and praise from her husband. End quote. Thus will be the woman loaded with blessings said. and receive all honors. That is the strong and valiant woman, woman. Yeah. you know, the mm -hmm. one who does all the duties and all the work, the victuals is that food, I think. Yeah, victuals. You so. know, old, old word there. Um, but basically, you know, looking after all the people. I mean, back in the day, she had to look after servants. And like, right. You know, yeah. Like, so maybe some of this isn't, you can take what you want from that. <laughs> I don't have any servants. I don't know about anybody else listening. <laughs> No, the only servant in this house is me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Update 2023. You are the servant. <laughs> you are the servant. 
Let yeah. that sink in. Okay. <laughs> All right. Actually, we just have a couple. Yeah, just a little bit more. Might little as well more just get paragraphs of the chapter and then it's done. So, quote, one of the essential characteristics of piety is to make us humble in the sight of God. Sever, our, sever to ourselves, oh, sorry, severe to ourselves, but patient and indulgent towards others. To be always inspecting the conduct of noticing the faults of our neighbor while we are blind to our own imperfections, to boast like the Pharisee that we have not those vices which we observe with the secret satisfaction in other people, to be impatient a contradiction, humiliation a reproof, to seek always our ease and what is agreeable or flattering instead of bearing about in our body the mortification of Jesus, to be always dissatisfied with others while we are pleased with ourselves, our sinful defects, which give scandal and bring discredit upon religion. For those who are addicted to such faults, piety is nothing more than a cloak to cover their egotism and their pride, and sort of profanation for which they will render a strict account at the bar of divine justice, end quote. There was an ism in there. Was there? Egotism. Egotism, yeah. I mean, we, Heresy. I, we talked about that last week, you know, being severe with yourself and patient yes. with everybody else. It's, 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 um, it's pretty... Um, what do you call that? Repetitive. Like, yeah, the not judging is so important, ladies. I cannot well, even tell you. I'd like to point out here the one thing that I read, which um very important to note, give scandal and bring discredit upon religion. Yes. So when you you hear and you see it all the time on the Internet. Yeah. Judgmental, judgmental. Catholics are judgmental. Yeah. You know, and that really, it really does discredit the faith. Right. It is one of the biggest detriments to the faith, I feel, when you hear from somebody that you're trying to convert or you want to come to the religion, they will always pull that card out of pull their... Pull out of their card, My yeah. dad used it all the time. He did, yeah. Yep, sin all through the week, but go to church on Sunday and you guys are great, you know, yeah. like... So you have to, and I'm saying this for myself included, you have to be very conscious of yourself. Yeah. That you are severe with yourself, but lenient and patient with everybody else. And then back to that Mary of personal sanctity. What good is it to save others and be lost myself? myself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the everything, you know, begins and ends with you. And yeah. that sounds so narcissistic, but it's in a it's different in a, way Way. yeah you know like you have to become a saint you have to you have to do the hard work there was like you cannot judge anybody like judge and you know and i know and this is what i think kind of happened because you know we came into the the novice order where everything was free willy like you know oh you know you're saved you're saved you're oprah have a car everybody's saved saved. it's all wonderful everything's good right (laughs) and the traditional movement was like okay no No. it doesn't work work like that you know you don't just you know not everybody is good and so we went to the other other extreme Like trying to get, no, harsh, judgment, judgment, judgment. And we're trying to pound it home people. No, you get judged. You get judged. And in the process of. We forgot that God does the judging. Of doing that, (laughs) you know, and also to pointing out, no, these things are sins, right? So we got all kind of, and I'm speaking about myself. Yeah. Because that's the way I got. Yeah. You know, like that's a sin. What are you talking about? This is a sin. Because you're dealing with people who are, you know. Woohoo, everything's wonderful, Beautiful. you know, yeah. and you're just like, no, everything's a sin, you know, like. And then you, but the problem is, is you come down with the fire and brimstone and you just look like a judgmental. Yes, right. Meaning, so, and know? we have, we just, uh, to me, what I had learned was you just have to step back and go, nobody knows. Yeah. Nobody knows that they're going to get judged or that this is a sin or that, you know, nobody knows. Well, we know that they're going to get judged, but we don't know how. And no. We, it's not for us to wonder how they or why. They don't know. Oh, I get what you're saying. We I know, yeah, but yeah. they don't know. They don't think of anything except, no. you know, we're all happy and I don't even know what they think half the time. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, but the thing is, is that if we, we have to just say they don't know, it's not, God will have mercy. Yeah. Right? Everything got turned upside down. Right. We're in an Alice in Wonderland here. Oh, aren't we ever. You know, the only way that we can get out of this Alice in Wonderland is if we take ourselves back to the early Christians. Christians. Yeah. 
right? And the, how did the early Christians, I mean, they weren't going around, this is a sin, that's a sin. Yeah. They were so, they inspired people by their actual Action. love and, and their actions. actions. You know, they were so, people were so enthralled and drawn to them because the love they had for one another. Well, and I'm going to say they were drawn to them through two things. Yeah. Well, maybe not. These aren't the only two things. But when I read anything about a saint or see anything about a saint, what I feel is that what people were drawn to was their humbleness and their piety. Yeah. Right. And that and does, there's and there's no place in there for judging. Yeah, none, none. So, all right, let's just finish up our little last little part here of the chapter. Quote: The portraiture which Saint Paul draws of charity may be equally understood of piety. Quote: Charity is patient, is kind. Char charity envieth not, dealeth not perversely. It is not puffed up. It is not ambitious. Seeketh not her own. Is not provoked to anger. Thinketh no evil, rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoiceth with the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. End quote. Let those of the sex who rake profession of piety examine their sentiment and conduct by the standard which is here furnished by the apostle. End quote. And chapter 10. Right. What I, what I would say back to, you know, the charity and the piety is you have to be this shining example of that. And then when people say, man, that's a good person. Yeah. Like that is a good, kind person. Why are you so good and kind? You know, and I say, well, I love God or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And then they then they go, well, maybe I, I want. Maybe I need some of that. Maybe I need some of that. Yeah. And, then, and then God's grace is in the engine. Yeah. And God's grace tells them, you know, abortion is murder yeah. you know like yeah. you know like they learn it on their own mm. through god's grace. grace like your example is what is inspiring them mm. to actually learn it right. right you know so i mean you have to kind of look at it that way mm -hmm. and the other thing that i want to point out in the book there and i forgot to mention this i did take a note of it oh. and i forgot to mention it but um when they were described when they when you picture a woman Picture any picture of a mother, a good Christian Catholic mother that yeah. they've somebody's painted a picture of it. What is she? What is she doing? She's usually tending to her kids or the house or something. Yes. she's working. She's working. She's not sitting in a chair fanning herself. You know, you know, she's she's feeding kids pancakes or something. something she's yeah. stirring the pot. She's ironing the clothes. Yeah, you know, she's doing those things. Even I have this. Uh, I have this huge thing. For black and white, uh, I don't know, it's not art, but it's like antique black and white portraits or something, yeah. you know? But they're almost like printed pages. Anyways, and I found this one, and it's called Home Again. And uh, to me, when I look at it, I see a little dog that's been lost and comes home. Yeah. But there's there's a little boy, and there's a little girl, and they're, they're petting the dog, and they look really happy to see the dog. And I have it mm -hmm. hanging in my house. But the mother is very Christian looking mother, um, early eighteen hundreds maybe. And she's bending over and she's looking at the children. Yeah. Like she's not concerned about the dog, right? Right. But even in that moment, even though she's not baking a cake or sweeping the floor, she's tending to the, the children. children. Yeah. And every piece of art I find I'm when I'm out in antique stores, I'm always drawn to the art portraits of the mothers tending to the children right and i and i scoop them up if i see them yeah i i just you got love, quite the collection i got quite the collection <laughs> i have my religious ones too like i found a beautiful one of our lord in the presentation the temple um vintage really vintage nice. really nice i'll take a picture of it and i'll post it on our catholic homestead uh, instagram so you can see if you follow us there but um i i just love the the that's what did that is what our world, this new age art, I yeah. don't know. Ugh. Yeah, well. <laughs> I, you know, like it's just. It doesn't usually present a lot of virtue. No, it presents a lot of lines, squiggles, and <laughs> slop. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, but uh, I just wanted to throw that out there because that's so true. I never yeah. thought of that before. But as right. you said that, the mother you know. is always tending to the duty. Yeah. That's what makes it so Yeah. Pleasing. And I mean, I, I just think, ladies, we have to just put two things into perspective. Not to judge other people and to, you know, wear that yoke proudly. Like mm -hmm. you're when you're doing it, 
you're doing it to save your soul, to save Same. your children. And this is what God wants of you. Yeah. You know, and it's, and it's producing grace. Mm -hmm. It's allowing God's grace to, to flow. flow. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's, a, it's allowing God's grace to flow. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And this is what you want. This is how you get a peaceful home. Yeah. All right. So I guess we'll leave it there for this week. Um, we're a little over an hour. So if you're still with us, thank you for sticking How much are in. we over? Oh, just 10 minutes. Mm. <laughs> but in a podcast, that could seem like a long time. So we'll wrap it up there. Uh -huh. And we'll be back next week um, for another exciting episode. And um, as always, if you have any questions or comments, uh, we love yeah. to read them. Put them in the comment section there. And uh, look for the Holy look Hour. Look for the Guardians of Truth. Hopefully by the time we post this, my mom has typed it all out. Um, if not, it'll definitely be next week. Um, so anyways, have a very blessed week. As always, may our Lord bless you and our lady guide you. And St. Teresa, Teresa, pray, pray for, for us. us.